partnership that we have, and we do commit them to you as you can the fruits this morning. Quietness of heart, give him your peace, give him your strength, and your boldness, and as I pray that you inspire him, even as he brings your word, may he know your, your presence with him as he brings that to us. So we ask that you will make him your mouthpiece this morning, that we might all be touched by your Holy Spirit, and we might draw closer to you. Speak your words through the scriptures to us too. That is absolutely as we come unto your authority. We pray in Jesus' name. Hi everyone. Good morning. good morning church. Good morning. It's good to be in the uh, house of Bachelor for Church and to see so many people here is a blessing unto God. My name is Ben and I serve at Unified Body of Christ Church under Pastor Evans' leadership and I'm so grateful to Pastor Alan uh, for inviting me here to come and share the gospel and come and share the word. Before we go, I just want to pray and I'm heading to our world today. Lord, thank you so much for your spirit and your presence that's here amongst us. Thank you for the peace and the joy that we have in our hearts because you are here. David said, Better is one day in your course than a thousand elsewhere. And to be in your course, Lord Jesus, there's no greater joy. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. May this word that come forth, may it bear fruit, Lord Jesus. May no seed return void, Lord Jesus, and may every single person who hears, Lord, may it fall on good soil, yes. and may this change your life. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Church, now I'm speaking about redeeming the time. I was praying to God and I was asking of God, what do you want to, to share? And the Lord said that I should talk about redeeming the time. And let's look at the first scripture, which is Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 15 to 17. But I still love to see so many faces, and I'm happy to be there. We have so much in common, and we do so many things together, we worship together. Um, Pastor Alan and my dad have been friends for many years, so it's so good that we can work together as a team. And I'm from Stand for Christ as well. Seeing so many people who are here who are also at Stand for Christ, God bless you for your help. We had over 95 volunteers and 14 churches all joined the glory of God. So we look forward to what God's going to do. Now let's look at Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15. I'm going to read all to verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 to 18. If you mind telling me about it, there. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Where we not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and we not drunk with wine, we in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Can you please be asked me, redeeming the time? Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. Now, it's so important, and the Lord has put this in my heart to share with you guys, because the Lord has give me an urgency and he wants me to tell the church that we need to have urgency in these last days. The church sometimes we can be very relaxed and very comfortable in our way of life, in our routine of Christianity and we actually forget about the importance of taking and making the most of every opportunity. And the Lord wants me to give you guys and put into your hearts the urgency of the times and the days that we're living in. And it's important for us to make the most of every opportunity we have. So that's why the word says to redeem the time. Now let's understand what the word redeem means quickly in the Bible. Biblical context, redeem tends to mean to gain back possession or to buy back something. For example, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That means to, that Christ has delivered us from the bondage of the law. That's what redeem means in normal biblical context. But in this context, the word redeemed means to make the most of the opportunities that we have. Now time, we cannot buy back time. And who here feels like you're getting older as the days go by? I feel like I'm getting older very quickly. And believe me, I'm only really 22. But as time goes by, we can't buy back time. Once time is gone, we cannot get it back. So as some people may go and have a voucher, they may go to the shop and give it in, and they may get something of value for what they've done. That's redeeming a voucher 
We cannot do that with time. We cannot pray to God and say, God, give me an extra five minutes. I think only one person in the Bible managed to do that. That was King Hezekiah. Uh, he was the only person who knew God managed to give him extra time. But we don't know what other extra time. This is not the match. We've got a sin. God has given us a limited amount of time and we must fulfill our days with earth. And with this time we have, we must make the most of it. That's what it means to redeem the time. So, redeem the time is making the most of every opportunity we have whilst we are still on earth. And this is why we must be urgent. Because as time goes by, we don't get the same opportunities again. Days are passing by and we I mean, we don't speak to that same person who the Lord told you to speak to before. So we must make the most of every opportunity we have. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let me go to my notes and let's see what the Lord has prepared for us. Jesus also tells us about the, the importance of making the most of every opportunity. Jesus, 33 years old, that's when he died. He had a ministry of three years and he changed the world in three years. Tell me some of God who made the most of every opportunity. Tell me some of God that who said Jesus who used his time effectively. 33 years old, he had three years of ministry and he changed the whole world. This is what redeeming the time looks like. This is what it looks like to make the most of every opportunity. Jesus himself told us his mentality about redeeming the time. He described it like this in John chapter 9, verse 4. John chapter 9, verse 4. Let's read it there quickly. John chapter 9, verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me whilst it is day. For the night come when no man can work. This is Jesus' mentality about time. Jesus knows he only has a limited amount of time on earth. So he sees time as day and night. And he sees the daytime as a time to work. Now day is the back of that time for context. Day is the right time to work because that's when the sunlight is, is about. So they can use the sunlight to go around and do their activities. Because when night time comes, they can't see what they're doing. So they have to close up shop and stop working. So Jesus describes daytime as a time to work. But also he was referring to more than just a normal working day. Jesus' daytime was his life. The daytime was the period he had to live with her. And his nighttime was the time when he dies. At nighttime, people sleep, right? People sleep at nighttime. At nighttime, when people sleep, that refers to death. So Jesus was referring to the time when he's going to sleep, and that means when he's going to die. So our daytime is working. That means that our daytime is a time for our life and a time for use for the, for the work of God. Because when it comes to night time, that's when we sleep. And when we sleep, it refers to death. That means our time has come to an end. We cannot do anything. So it's so important for us to understand whilst it is day, we must work. You might just say that to the person next to you. Whilst it is day, we must work. I'm not um, getting to anyone who does a night shift. I understand you must work. So if you're doing a night shift, please, this is not preaching against you. But I'm trying to make us understand that working is during your lifetime. And when our life has come to an end, we cannot work anymore. It's a simple thing that Jesus is trying to make us understand. So Jesus wants us to be responsible of our time. He wants us to make the most of our time on earth. He wants us to have an impact wherever we go. Jesus only worked around the region of Israel and Palestine. But one man's impact changed the course of the world. So my challenge to you is, how are you impacting your community? How are you impacting your workplace? How are you impacting your universities? How are you impacting your schools? Because Jesus worked in this region but he managed to impact them with the time that he had. Are we impacting our workplaces, our friends? Are we making an impact with the time that we have? Now I want to give you three reasons why
why it was my dream our time. Three reasons why it was my dream our time. My first reason is time is short. Now you always have so many sayings for time. Time is by by. Where did the time go? Anyone? Time is gold, yes. And we have all these sayings for time. And we laugh about we say, oh, I'm about to get a bit old now. And we have all of these jokes and all of these things that we say with to time. But, do we take into consideration that each time we get, we cannot get it back again? And one thing that we want to do is live with regrets. Live contemplating, I wish, I wish, I wish. You know, I've heard so many people say that when they're younger, they wish they had more time. But with the time that was allocated to you, what did you do with it? This is the question. So, time is short, and the Bible says this in so many places. Psalm 144, verse 3 and 4. Let me read this quickly. Psalm 144, verse 3 and 4. It says, Lord, what is a man that you talk knowledge of him? That you take knowledge of him? What is the son of man that thou makest a of him? A man is like vanity. His days are as a shadow that passes away. Our days are like a shadow. And one day the shadow is dead, and over a certain period of time the shadow disappears. That is how short our time is on earth. And those who are parents here, you watch your kids grow, and you always wonder, when does this time go by? And this is the reality for us on that as well. God is watching us, he's watching us from the time we're born to where we are now. And he wants to see, are we making the most of our time alive? Let me move on to my second point. My second point is that we must redeem the time because the days are evil. This is what it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Um, verse 16, sorry. It says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. If you're not aware, or if you don't watch these, uh, we live in pretty bad times. We live in scary times, actually. Sometimes they even go safe going out at night, letting your children go here and there, because we understand the times we live in. And because our days are evil, it means that we need to do as much as we can to impact our society, impact our communities, <coughs> to change people's perspective and let them know about the truth of Jesus Christ. Because the days are evil, it actually works to our advantage. Because as darkness increases, the light shines brighter. So when we see darkness starting to increase in our communities, it gives opportunity for you, who are the light, to stand up on the other side. So this is your chance now. As darkness is increasing in society, it takes one person to stand and be the light. And I always used to think, if all the light sources are in one place, no one can really shine or stand up. So if all of us who are light, are uh, restricting ourselves between those four walls. Who's going to be the light then? Because we're all standing out, we're all bright. But you stand out when you, as someone who's the light, goes into a dark place. That's when you stand out most. Light stands out in darkness. Light cannot stand out amongst light. So, the Lord was speaking to me one time. He said that I have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. I said, what does this mean? He said that you have to be uncomfortable, you have to be comfortable being in uncomfortable places, being in uncomfortable situations. Because this is how people see the light of God. When you're able to stand in a place and <laughs> tell people about Jesus, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. People looking at you rejecting you is not comfortable at all. It's not a nice feeling. But we have to get comfortable with these uncomfortable situations. This is how the light changes the world. It takes one person to change the world. Jesus Christ is our So you can change your society, your family, your community. 
So as darkness and the evil days are increasing, it is actually an opportunity for you now to stand out. So take this to your advantage. And my third point is, we must redeem the time because we will never get this opportunity again. One time I was on the bus, I was going to work, and it was around 7.30 in the morning, and the Lord was saying to me that I should evangelize to someone next to me. And this guy, he had his headphones in, he was a big guy, he looked very intimidating. I was like, Lord, it's too early. I was giving the Lord all excuses. It's too early, Lord. He's not going to listen to what I have to say. He probably hasn't had breakfast this morning. I don't want to make his money any worse. And I was, you know, I was making up all the excuses I could to not do it. Eventually, the guy got off the bus before I was about to speak. And then the Lord said to me, what if this was his last chance to hear the gospel? Then I started to think about it. Opportunities sometimes only come once. And the reality is, when the Lord has placed someone on your pathway is because he, he wants them to encounter you so you can share the to them. So we must take advantage of the opportunities that we have and make the most of every opportunity because some opportunities don't come again. So when you're walking or you're on the bus and you meet someone and you feel the prompt of the Holy Spirit to share the gospel, yes, it's uncomfortable. We have to die to our pride and we have to share the gospel and let others know about the truth. This might be the only chance of hearing the gospel. That might be for you. So, these are my three points, and I want us to quickly go over how do we redeem the time. So, I explained why we must redeem the time because time is short, because the days are evil. And because we, never, we, might not, we, we may never get this opportunity again. Now I want to explain that how do we redeem the time? And my first example is of course Jesus Christ. As I said earlier, 33 years old, he had a three year ministry and he made an impact that changed the world. So how do we redeem the time? Jesus, his mentality was he was about his father's business. I don't think there's anyone on earth who was as focused as Jesus to a mission. Jesus was so focused to his mission, which was, he was about his father's business. Do you know what age he said that? He said that to his parents at age five, I believe, when he got lost in Jerusalem. His parents were looking at him and he said to his parents, I'm about my father's business. May we be about our father's business too. May this be our mentality that we are about our Father's business. It says in John chapter 4 verse 30, Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of God. It was to do the will of him that sent me. His food is to do the will of God. That's what he desires to do, God's will. So, how do we redeem our time? It's by being about our Father's business. Being about God's business. Focusing on his business. What does it say? Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added to you. First is the kingdom, then everything else is second. My second point. We must do everything. How do we redeem the time? We must do everything to bring glory to God. And I love this verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. It says, So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Whatever we do, think, does it bring glory to God? Even eating, does it bring glory to God? So, this might help us to watch our weight, maybe. Whatever we do, does it bring glory to God? Let's think about it. The way how we interact with people, the way how I speak to someone, does it bring glory to God? This is how we have to think. My next point is that how do we need the time? We must walk in wisdom. We must walk in wisdom. Have you heard the parable of the ten virgins? Five virgins were wise and five virgins were foolish. Now this story is 
It's such a powerful story and it relates to our time so much. Because all ten of them are actually doing the right thing. The virgins that um, prepared their whole lives for the coming of the bridegroom. So they've actually made it all the way to the end. That's just the last part. In fact, if you read the story in Matthew 25, it says that they took their lives, and I believe that they took their lives as precautionary, in case it doesn't come through the day. Let's have lives in the night, just in case. So I believe they took their lives as precautionary. But the five wise virgins, they took oil with their lamp, just in case he comes at night. And it happens to be that it says that he delayed in his coming. And he did not come during the day, but he came at night time. And when they cry that the bridegroom is here, the five foolish virgins, who had done everything right up until the time he was coming, they were looking out for oil to go and find the king. So what are we doing with our time? That's what I was thinking. How long does it take to get home? Not that long. But what was it that the five virgins were so ahead of the time, so prepared, so focused, and the five foolish were not? Because the five virgins had foresight. The five virgins made every opportunity that they had. I'm sure it would have taken about a couple of minutes to go and find some oil and just leave it at the side in case. But because they did not prepare in advance, um, one time my teacher said to me that when I was in school, if you don't prepare, prepare to go. I didn't understand what she meant until I had an exam. Then I understood what she meant. And that is a reality. They did not prepare, so they failed. The five virgins who were wise, they saw and they understood now let us take it just in case he comes at night time. And let us be ready for him. So my, my commendation to you is, are you doing everything possible to be ready for Jesus coming? Are you preparing your hearts and are you making the most of every opportunity to prepare for Jesus coming? My fourth point is, we must seek the Lord's will in all situations. How do we leave the time by seeking the Lord's will in all situations? First Corinthians, Chapter 10. That's when he talks about. Let me read actually. Let me read. First Corinthians chapter 10. Let me read. It says, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify me. We have the right to do all things. You're allowed to, to go where you want. You're allowed to do whatever you want. But not all things edify us. That's the truth. And the, the truth is that, you know, it's not bad to, to have fun. It's not bad to, to relax. I'm not against any of that. But there comes to a point in our life where we have to realize that are we, is this edifying me? Is this helping me in my Christian walk? Is this sharpening me? Or is this dulling me? Is this making me more dull? Is this making me more lethargic? Is this making me more lazy? We can always choose. Spend time with God. I can spend time with God. Or I can, go, or I can watch Netflix. I could, I could pray. Or I can go play video games. And you, you, you always have the opportunity to do what is the best thing to do, what is going to edify me, what's going to sharpen me, what's going to make me more focused on him, and what makes me dull. And the truth is up to you. But my petition to you is, make the most of every opportunity you have. So whatever edifies, choose that. Whatever brings glory to God, choose that. Whatever will build you up, choose that. Don't choose the things that will make you dull, that will bring down your faith, that will make you run away from Him. I want to give you a quick example. There's a man called Michael Phelps, he's an Olympic swimmer. It says that he said that he goes to training 365 times a day in a year. So 
sorry, 365 times in a year. So every single day you go swimming. And they ask him, do you not take days off for birthdays or Christmas or anything? He goes, if I take a day off, that means that I've already fallen behind one day. It takes another day to catch up to where I was supposed to be yesterday. And now for me, my competitors have already got their advantage on me. So you can miss reading the Bible one day, and you can think this is not making a big influence or change in my life. But the next thing you know, you start to you see yourself dropping. And you're not as sharp. You're not as serious. You're not as hungry. And you start to go down. And this is what happens. So my thoughts are that I train every single day so I can be the best possible. He doesn't miss anything. I have one more point. How do you redeem the time is by loving your neighbor. There's no, there's no greater love than this than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. This is our love for Jesus Christ. If we cannot love our neighbor, first by sharing the gospel, then the, we can't show them any other greater love. The greatest love we can show to our neighbor is first telling them about Jesus. That's the first greatest love. And the second thing, we can do other things to love our neighbors through acts and helping them and being kind and showing them the fruits of the Spirit. So how do we need the time? By loving your neighbor and other people around you. Now I want to end with a simple Latin phrase. My teacher told me this in school. The Latin phrase goes, carpe diem. Have you heard of this before? I don't know how to Carpe diem. Do you know what it means? Seize the day. And now I want you just to go away thinking. Have I seized this day for Jesus Christ? Have I made the most of this day for Jesus Christ? Carpe diem. So seize the day for Him. Seize the day for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let me read to you the final verse from Romans chapter 13, 11 to 14. Then we'll end. Romans 13, 11 to 14. It says here, and that, knowing that, and that knowing the time, that now is the high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of life. <laughs> let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in the pride and the drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust of the hour. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my last word to you. And make no provision for the flesh. So let's pray and I'll end.